We are never satisfied. We want more, God. And so I pray this day that you, the Father of glory, would grant unto us, your children, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened <laughs> that we may know what is the hope of your glory that we may know the power of the resurrection that we may know the inheritance of the ascension oh master how we love you and honor you we rededicate our hearts our lives with a fresh commitment to you there is a deep longing on the inside of us. I was standing over there and I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, tell the people that I want to open up their hearing. I mean, that's one of the greatest honors I think I always say to God in my life is to have God talk to you and to actually hear him and to know it's him when he talks you say well i'm not at that place listen you can be it's all based on intimacy come on it's not based on a formula even though we try right how hungry are we how patient are you those that wait upon the lord we've got to learn to do that but i believe something significant is coming to you right at this time and those of you that are watching I prayed it out that the Spirit would grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Watch this, in the knowledge of Him. That the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened. You know what that is? That's your human spirit. Would be enlightened that revelation, direction, wisdom, knowledge, come on, will come to you that you'll hear His voice. Lord, I pray. It said even 15 times in the New Testament, let those who have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Lord, we, we want to hear your voice. And I pray today that you would release a fresh anointing that would touch our ears, that our ears would be circumcised today, that we would cut away the flesh and the things that, Lord God, affect our hearing, affect our perspective, that brings, uh, Father, even wrong things. And I pray that you would touch our hearing, as you said, and that we would hear your voice and a voice of a stranger. Contrary voices we won't follow, but we will recognize, for you said, my sheep, and that's who we are. Hear my voice. What a privilege, what an honor. And you have promised through the mouths of Peter when he prophesied on the day of Pentecost and you said that this is the time now that we would have visions and dreams. And you would pour out your spirit upon your sons and your daughters. God, that is us. And those that are led by the spirit are the children of God. We're your children anoint our ears I want you to say that those of you even at home say I hear the voice of God the voice of strangers I will not follow but I hear God I hear God clearly I hear God accurately I receive revelation by the Spirit of God I receive direction I receive the words from his sacred heart as he speaks to me I will know it's God just like Samuel I will know it's his voice and he will guide me he will lead me he will woo me by his voice to go deeper isn't that what you want that's what I want come on just give him worship give him worship now I want you to do this I'm gonna ask the father to bless you because that's something he loves to do you know I can't even have a worship session without him 
where, where I say to him, I'm like, God, I'm not here to ask you for anything. You don't even have to bless me. I'm here just to pour out and lavish you with my love and my awful singing. And he laughs and he tells me, keep singing. I like it. And I'm like, well, you didn't tell me if you like it or not. <laughs> you know. But here's the thing. You just, you just have to keep worshiping him. And every time he says, how can I bless you? I'm like, Lord, I'm not asking for anything. But since you asked, right? Father, see these beautiful people today. Their hands are lifted. Others, they're just standing in a receptive place. You know their needs even before they ask. Maybe they need a touch in their body. Maybe they need a miracle. God, I pray, not of my might, not of my power, but by your spirit. God, it, this is not just the anointing. This is the glory. Where you, the Father, manifest yourself where you touch their needs where no man receives the glory the honor the credit but only you the most high and i pray this for everyone in the sound of my voice that is in this room and those that are even online receive the touch from your father that meets every need in excess be healed be at peace be provided as God lavishes His love upon you that every need is met in excess. Receive the touch and the blessing of God Himself, the great I Am. Now I want you to do it by faith. Say, Lord, I receive answers to my prayer. Thank you for meeting my needs and providing my wants amen I had an angel one time come to me in a dream you can give God a hand clap and uh, this is very key for those of you that are watching so we this is before the remodel and I was I was in a building project and this man walked up to me with a suitcase or well, not a suitcase briefcase and and he looked at me and he opened it up and it was full of money he said, I've been sent. What do you want? And I started telling him what I needed. He got up, because he was sitting across from me. He got up, slammed the briefcase shut. And I knew it was an angel in the dream, like I was just stupid. And he said, I did not. And he had holy fire in his eyes. He said, I did not come to ask you what you needed. I came and opened and I asked you what you want. There's a difference. And man, did I tell him. At least I got to correct it, right? So let God know what you want. Come on, He knows your needs. Tell Him what you want. Tell Him those, you know, pray prayers that go beyond your human re reasoning. You know, go, pray prayers that are beyond what you yourself could do. Okay? And watch what God will do. Praise the Lord. Well, why don't you do this? Why don't you, it's Palm Sunday, so I want you to exercise your palms. And I want you to greet someone. And I want you to give them a high five. Play rock, paper, scissors. See if you win. Now, those of you that know how I play, you can administer those if you feel like you're losing but go ahead greet one another and share your palms one with another thank god for those that are standing up and bringing sanity back to insanity right so we thank god for that make sure you tune in this week all right well hey i wanted to tell you and those of you that are watching today is lord of host church is 26 seventh year anniversary <laughs> and uh let's give let's give honor to god father we thank you so much for what you birthed what you started god we didn't start with anything we really didn't have anybody and even the first sunday we were like is anybody gonna come and god the rest is history that you've been writing and we honor you and we thank you let's just tell them thank you we're here for you, God. Amen. 
So what I want to do is I want to just share with you a few pictures in just a moment, but I want to just share a couple scriptures because maybe some of you that are watching real quick, you don't know the history. So it was in 1996, and I want to say, all I remember is it was somewhere around, um, I thought it was October before Thanksgiving, we were driving, I was driving my uh, green uh, Dodge Caravan, and it was a turtle shell. It had one of those little turtle things on it, shell, looked like a turtle shell on top. It's part of the conversion package. And I was driving it, and I know exactly where I was at, and I heard the voice of the Lord. It sounded like it was audible to me. And uh, it, it, it was so impacting. He said, Hank, will you pastor? And I had been traveling at that time trying to make it in the ministry and that was in 1996, and I pulled over to the side of the road, and I said, Lord, this is shaking me. I said, if you want me to, Pastor, you know, I'm an evangelist, I'll do it. He said, well, I want you to go and uh, lay on your bed. I want to speak to you, and there's some things I want to show you. And so when I went to uh, my house, I immediately went upstairs, laid on my bed, and God began to speak to me. And he said, I want you to go to Omaha. And I said, you know what I told him? And I don't believe this now. I said, you want me to go to that God-forsaken city? That's what I told him. But it's not God-forsaken. The Lord's here. And I've repented, so just have mercy on me, according to his loving kindness. And I said, I don't want to go there, but I'll do it. And uh, he uh, began to say to me, he said, I want you there. This was, again, in October, November of 96. He said, I want you there Saturday, March 22nd, Sunday, March 23rd. Well, I didn't know, and so I looked at the calendar, and uh, it was Palm Sunday. And he said, as the Lord brought a triumphal entry, I want to enter into that city and raise up what I've called you to do. And so we're here today. Now, God gave us a couple scriptures. I want you to see Isaiah 45. This is one of the scriptures. If you go back to 1997, you'll know this is one of the original scriptures. Isn't it amazing? This Isaiah 45 is what people use for 45, the Cyrus anointing. And here I've prophesied a lot about that man's um, mission here in the earth. Uh, so this is talking about Cyrus, but God gave this to me regarding, he said, this is what I'm going to do with you in this church. I'll raise you up in righteousness. I'll direct all your ways. You're going to build my city. And you shall let go my uh, captives, not for a price or a reward, saith the Lord of what? Hosts. He told me the name of the church will be called Lord of Hosts. I didn't even know what it meant. Thus saith the Lord, the labor of Egypt, the merchandise of Ethiopia, and the savings men of stature shall come over unto thee, and they shall be yours. They shall come after you in chains, and they shall come over, and they'll fall unto you, and they shall make supplication, saying, Surely God is in you. And there is none else, and there is no other God. That's what the King James is really saying. Here's another one. Look at this one. This one's been fulfilled. This one looked like Isaiah 60. This one looked like it would never happen. And God gave me this one right when we started. A little one shall become a what? Do you know what our membership is right here locally? If everybody came at the same time, and I'm talking consistent, I'm not bragging like exaggerating, we'd have 1,500, we have 1,500 members, okay, so a small one has become a thousand, and a small one shall become a strong nation, how many know what that is, that means we the people who are a company of people, and I the Lord will hasten us in my time, and I remember praying over these empty chairs that you're in, saying, God, where are they, where's the thousand, how many remember that, I, I came one time at 2.30 in the morning, because I couldn't sleep, and I came to the church, and I stood right by that pole, and I said, mark it down, God. I'm not going to kiss the backside of religion. I'm tired of empty chairs, and I picked them up. That's when they were red and began to throw them, and it's probably why some of them were bent when you sat on it. It was my fault, but <laughs> anyway, uh, then the last one I want to show you is um, 1 Chronicles 28.10, and with this, I want Pastor Brenda to come, because uh, in just a moment, we're going to receive the offering, and we're going to show some pictures, but I want her to stand with me for some of these pictures. Take heed now. For the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. This was given to us when we, where do you see the pictures? And those of you that are watching, we, we were like, we couldn't even fill the little room we were in. I had to mow the shag carpet on the weekend to get it ready for church, man. The Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and what? Do it. All right, Pastor Brenda, why don't you join me? Because in just a moment, we're going to receive the offering uh, today. It's a very prophetic time. Uh, not only... 
history, but also what's happening today in the earth. So I want you to see some pictures. If they'll put up, this is the first picture of when we started. This is what, maybe Brenda, you can help walk us through. This is where the children's base. So it wasn't are. even that good when we started. Actually, it was in that room, and this is... That was uh, two of In this building, that was, the church was a few months old by then, because you can yeah. see the date on the photo. Almost a year old. February of 98, but... That's pretty much how it looked. Those orange pews, that little bank of those, that was given to us by a, lo a church here in town that was replacing their seating. And what's funny about it, Paul Blackburn would remember this. They, the, the pews were designed, you explain this to us, um, I, they, didn't, they came with no legs. So Paul said, well, I can build legs for them. Well, what we didn't account for is that they were designed somehow for a slope floor. So everybody sort of sat in them like this. <laughs> But Nobody ever fell asleep in those no, days we during didn't. any sermon because the blood all rushed their head. But we really started, great, actually, so, I was telling Pastor yeah. Matt on the side over there, the first Sunday, we didn't even have chairs. Somebody donated 50 seats. Yep, that's those brown um, chairs. The brown there. chairs, and that's what those are. And then we added those pews. Yeah. But that area of this building is where the ARC desk is. If you guys go out, it's no wider than that. That was the width of that. And the other, where you enter into Promise Kids on both sides, those were two separate bays with different tenants. Um, but that was just But what's interesting behind. about that is when I asked the Lord, you know, I told the landlord, I said, can I just come here and pray before I sign? He said, sure. And I prayed, and I was standing in the hallway, and I don't know if it actually happened or... You know, like if you ever had a vision or an open vision, but Jesus appeared and he walked up to me and he handed me keys right in, right in front there. And he said, I've given you the authority now for the city. And he said, for the nation, because he called the name of the church, Lord of hosts, world outreach. And he turned around and walked away. And I was like, is this really happening to me? Did, you know, because I mean, I felt the fear of God and he walked away and he turned around and he started laughing and he said, remember the children. And he was gone. And that's where our children area is today. And, uh, yes. and then what God is doing with the kids, with, our, with the children, with the ministry, I just think that's incredible. All right, show so, the next picture. I'll give the, the after time. of it. You know, this is for the internet for people to see. Yeah. Do you have kind of a before and after? Did you get okay. that one? Well, I don't know. This is the okay, outside. Now, there's a double rainbow that appeared. Yeah, we got to move, move the pictures yeah. here so we got time here. But, but look that at, was how the church used to look, and that yeah. is right in front of the sanctuary. That's where the doors were. And that's how, when I say the building looked like the pizza building, it really did. And when God told me to buy this building, it took him three times. I said, I, I said, I told him, I said, come here. I, I said, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but I'm going to make a deal. If you will pay for it, um, I said, I'll do it. But the other thing I have, God, is take the ugly away from it and make it Lord of hosts the beautiful. Hasn't he kept his part? <laughs> okay. So look at that. Now look at it. Today. Now look at Lord of hosts the beautiful. He kept his part. Not only is he providing, but he kept his part. All right, look now, look at it on the inside. So look at the sanctuary now. Uh, if they can show, do they have the inside picture of the sanctuary? I don't know what they have uh, back there. Okay, these are the pictures of the new sanctuary. So yeah. anyway, Brenda, I'm going to let you take over, and you can kind of walk us so, through everything. You know, All right, let's give God praise for 